Hi everyone and welcome to episode 30 of Teach Tech Play. I'm Eleni Karitsis and I'm your host and founder of Teach Tech Play. Tonight we've got a great show with some fantastic educators from around Australia who are going to be sharing a range of tools um, that they're using in their classroom and information for teachers to support us in the classroom. But before we get started with tonight's show, I want to thank everybody for coming to the Teach Tech Play conference. Uh, last month. It was absolutely fantastic two days. We had two fantastic keynotes with Ewan McIntosh and Matt Miller and also John Burgess on the first day. I know that there was great learning that took place. <coughs> A lot of teachers connected and learnt from one another. Steve, do you want to say hello to everyone? Hello everybody. Yeah, this is the first time we're catching up post Teach Tech Play. And I have to say, Eleni, that I'm still digesting all of the gold that I discover just from the keynotes. Uh, and connecting with others post conference has you know just continued that conversation. So, you know, I chatted to Charlotte Forward last week, and she was still buzzing about the conference. So, I'm excited to to touch base with with everybody today, and to hear what Blake, Ben, Matt, and Deb have to share. Fantastic. Now. To get to introduce everybody to our fantastic presenters tonight, we have got a range of presenters, but before we get started, I should congratulate last month's winner before I forget. So episode 29 was a No Tosh special edition and Chantal Love was the winner of last month's episode. So big congratulations to Chantal. But we also had another winner at the conference for the Nathan Jones Award. And we're lucky enough to have Ben Lennon on the show tonight to share some of the wonderful things he's doing in his classroom. So Ben, do you wanna introduce yourself first and tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, thanks Lenny. Thanks, um, thanks very much for the intro. Thanks very much for the award. Um, it was very humbling, obviously. Um, so um, yeah, I feel very lucky. So thanks very much. Um, yeah, my, my name's Ben, uh, e-learning leader at Holy Spirit uh, Primary School. And, um, and a very proud 5-6 teacher as well. Um, been there five years now and, um, and looking forward to, to tonight. So I'll be talking about drones in education and a little activity that we've done in the classroom that's been um, really engaging. Um, similar to, to Spiro's, um, if you've seen that before, but um, it'll be a, a drone focus. Fantastic, Ben. Next, after Ben t on tonight's show, we'll have Deb. So Deb, do you want to share a little bit about yourself? And I had the privilege of finally getting to meet you. I know we were great friends on Twitter, but hadn't physically met until the Teach Tech Play conference. So it was great to meet you and great to have you on the show tonight. Hi, Eleni. Thanks. I'm excited to be here. Um, so I'm a primary teacher originally from Melbourne and um, living in Sydney now. And I've, I've been really fortunate to get into the... Um, the tech integration, um, sort of move out of the classroom into, more into tech integration, working with teachers and more recently a little bit in the corporate world as well, which is really cool. Um, and I've been playing a little bit in the, in the startup world. So pretty excited to be telling you tonight about um, a passion project of mine that's, uh, yeah, that I've been working on. So and, thanks for the invite. No problem, fantastic Deb. And obviously a lot of us do have passion projects and Teach Tech Play was one of those back in the day, a few years back and it continues to grow. Um, after Deb tonight, we have got Matt. And Matt, I had the privilege of meeting you last year at a conference and we've connected a few times now, which, and it's great to have you on the show. Thanks, Lani. Yeah, we had some fun with the robots um, down in Melbourne, which was great. So my name is Matt Heinrich. Um, I'm the Director of Digital Learning uh, and Innovation at a Peter 12 uh, college in Canberra. Um, my background's in, in primary junior teaching uh, in a PYP setting. So um, that really uh, influences, I guess, my approach to, to technology use and have been lucky enough to have technology coaching roles and, and now to be able to look a bit more strategically and broadly um, but I, I love shows like this. I, I returned from from no Wi-Fi on a on a horrible year ten camp to a, a buzz of, of Twitter and feeds from Teach Tech Place. So um, yeah, looking forward to sharing a little bit tonight. Um, just about a little app that's popped up in the last few weeks. Wonderful. Thank you, Matt. And we're looking forward to hearing about that later in the show. I'll then be sharing um, about five 
peas to a positive digital footprint. I created a visual, which I'm pretty sure I shared on an other episode, but I've now created a board game that I'll be sharing with everyone. And to end our show tonight, we have got Blake, who we've had on the show before, sharing something new and exciting he's been working on as well. Yes, thanks, Lenny. Thanks for having me back. It's been a while since I've been on Teach Tech Play, but the uh, show's just going from strength to strength, which is fantastic. And for any of you who don't know me, I'm the assistance manager at McKinnon Secondary College, which is a large secondary college in Victoria. And my passion's really around bridging that teacher and technology divide and trying to you know, bring the techs and the technology as close to the teaching and learning as we possibly can. So looking forward to presenting tonight. Wonderful. Thanks, Blake. Now, remember for all our presenters, remember to vote for your favourite presenter. So here is the slide to um, vote. Make sure you do vote. And voting will be open till Friday, 8pm. So the link is bit.ly forward slash TTP lowercase e. 30 vote and you can also find this on the teach tech play website and that's just www.teachtechplay.com where you can also find lots of things from the conference to um, educators of teach tech play to every episode we've ever recorded a little bit about us what else is up there steve i can't even think <laughs> there's so much oh and the blog absolutely i think we've uh yeah, it's one of those things that when you look back at the back catalogue of the episodes, there is absolutely so much gold in there. So if you're not sure about where to start, look, I'm looking at the lineup that we have tonight and you've got four people doing amazing things in education and that's pretty much the standard for each episode. So for anybody who has not ever watched a Teach Tech Play episode, check out the back catalogue. Thank you, Steve. Now we better get started with tonight's show. You can follow along via the hashtag TT Play on Twitter. And that hashtag can be used at any time. If you ever find you've got a question or need to be connected with somebody, just use the hashtag via Twitter and we'll be sure to connect you with somebody who can help you out. So first up on tonight's show, we have got Ben Lannan. And Ben was, as I already mentioned, the winner of the Nathan Jones Award. And Nathan Jones was a key component of Teach Tech Play, a good dear friend of ours, and it was only seemed right to do something in his memory. And Ben, what you're doing in your classroom is phenomenal. And I know Nathan would be amazed to see how much you have grown as a teacher as well. So we're happy to have you share. And I know a lot of people saw your Quidditch um, drone activity on your video. And uh, I know I want to know more. So that's why we got you on the show tonight. So when you're ready, Ben, you can start and let me know and I'll start the timer. Cool. Thanks, Lenny. Uh, I guess we can start straight away. Thanks again. Um, looking forward to, to, to a big, big night. Um, yeah, I guess uh, really excited to share the, the drone um, education activity that, that we shared at the, uh, the Teach Tech Play conference. Uh, which I have to say was, uh, was awesome, by the way. So thanks, guys. Um, I'll quickly share my screen so I can just take you through a quick... Uh, I've made the rookie mistake to start the timer, haven't I, Lenny? <laughs> anyway, here we go. Um, can you see that? Yeah, perfect. Cool. Um, so similar to any sort of Sphero and education uh, activity, drones work in quite a similar way. Um, with the tickle app, which I'll talk about really quickly, but I'll just show um, just a, a quick little snapshot of drones um, in a classroom setting. Cool. So without getting into the nuts and bolts on, I guess, how to use Tickle 
um, which is similar to how we use a, a Sphero um, in the classroom. Um, really quickly, the little things that you can do with drones with Tickle, you can obviously be able to take off from the ground, uh, change the height. Um, you're also able to play different sounds as well, and you can take you can take photos. Um, you can also flip the drone and you can then also talk about the different types of mathematics with degrees and distance and, and turning and stuff like that as well. So um, very, very easy to integrate into any sort of maths lesson. Um, but today we're going to look at a Quidditch game, a coding challenge that we've had in the classroom that's been really popular. So what you'll need, you'll need two drones at least. Um, I think some people get really, really uh, nervous when, they, when you hear about drones in, in technology. They're actually cheaper than Sphero's. Um, and by the way, I'm not trying to sell any drones. Uh, just make that really clear. Um, you need two iPads installed with the Tickle app. Uh, the Tickle, for those of you Tickle, uh, those that used Tickle app before, um, the Tickle app has evolved over the last probably sort of 12 months. Um, the capability of using drones with Tickle actually came off um, the Tickle app, but it's been since returned. Um, you're able to get around that previously though by using the light version of Tickle, which was uh, an earlier version which had the drone uh, capability still on there. But I believe now you can use the full version, the updated version. Um, you just need to have an account with, with Tickle. Uh, you need six, one minute, what, six hula hoops and two sets of Lego. So um, how you use in the classroom, you've got two teams. Uh, there should be team one and team two. Um, you've got a drone and a set of Lego for each team. And you see here you've got some hula hoops, which you can either hold up in the air like um, the Quidditch game for Harry Potter, or you can place it on the ground. If you remember the video, one of the boys, uh, the boy group, uh, were able to land the drone in the hula hoop. And what their task is, is to actually take the Lego and transport it into the, into the hula hoops or through the, through the hula hoops um, in a particular time limit. Um, now the Parrot drones have a little Lego uh, piece on the top of it, which allows you to transport the Lego. Um, and the students are able to then code um, their drone starting from the starting point and through the hula hoops. Uh, it's important to make sure the hula hoops are at different distances and different angles as well, which opens up really, really good maths um, curriculum links and is a really good challenge to introduce coding um, as well as time's up. Yeah, that's all right. Finish what cool. you're saying. Cool. Uh, just just to finish off, it's a really good link for maths, uh, which is what we we plan for. Um, similar to I guess Spiro's, if you're doing the uh, the masking tape on the floor with different shapes, um, different angles, and different distances as well. But um, but a nice little difference to that, I guess, is sort of having drones in the classroom. Um, kids love the idea of of having a device that actually flies. And, um, and the flipping and, and the sounds and the, and the photos are a good little difference as well. Um, so yeah, that's just a quick activity you can do with drones, which um, is a good difference. Thanks. Wonderful, thank you, Ben. And I know um, a lot of teachers get worried when they're thinking of the different ways to integrate, especially with the new digital technologies curriculum of how we can do it. But the thing with integration of technology is it fits so nicely into everything that we are already doing. We just have to think of creative ways to engage and motivate our students to want to do it. And I think your drone activity with the Quidditch game is a fantastic one. I hadn't ever heard or seen it before. So really well done. And um, the parrot drones, I know we also have those drones at my school and they are very good for in the school and they're very cheap, which, you know, some technology, components for coding these days are so expensive, but you can find cheap alternatives that work well in the classroom. Did any of our other presenters have any questions? Yeah, I do, Ben. That's just an amazing activity. And one of the, the two questions, and you answered it one throughout your presentation about, I don't know, Tickle uh, took away the drone facility for a little while there, and that was disappointing. So I'm really glad to see they brought it back in. But the Parrot drones, uh, they don't have a long battery life. So how do you combat that within your classroom? Yeah, good question, Steve. Uh, what we have is we've actually purchased, I think, an extra 30, no, I think 30, that's overkill. I think probably about 15 extra batteries, which we have on charge that we're able to just um, quickly chuck in. If we've got a lesson that's going for an hour, for instance, that, um, that needs the drones to be used. 
In fact, it's actually really only been useful uh, or needed, I guess, uh, when we've had multiple lessons after after one another that we've needed the drones. Uh, they generally last probably at least a, an hour, hour and a half session. Um, but after that, they need a charge. So if we've got battery backups, then we, that's how we've combated that. Fantastic. Because that's one of the things when it would take, just take this activity to be able to know the the backups. Because, you know, for somebody who's experienced yeah, like yourself, you know what to, you know, how to sort of prepare for it. And I think that's a, yeah, it's a really good way to do it. Yeah, extra batteries have helped. Yeah, for sure. Were there any other questions? No. Thank you, Ben, for sharing. Next up, we've got Deb sharing Ed Events app for teachers. So, Deb, let me know when you're ready and I will start the timer. Kido, that's a hard act to follow. <laughs> um, and I do also have to say big thanks for an awesome conference. I was really lucky to get down there this year and finally meet you. And thank you for this and from the environment too. Love my keep cup. Use it all the time. No problem. Um, I, will... I, know, I know a lot of people did love their keep cups and drink bottles. So glad that you enjoyed the conference. Let me know when you're ready to start the timer. Sure. Um, I've lost the... Oh, here we go. Sorry. That's going to move us out of the way. Here we go. So I'll share my screen. All right. So this is a passion project I've been working on. Like I said, um, it came about out of... Um, here we go. Let me open that. Let me know when you can see that. Yep, perfect. Oh. And I'll just shoot back to the start. There we go. Oh, good. All right. Go ahead and start me off. Um, yes, yeah, so look, this came about out of a personal need. So there are all these fantastic events happening, right? Like uh, Teach Tech Play. Um, teach me there's just so much going on and to be honest um, it was just it, it, this came about just as a, a need to kind of keep track of what's going on and also um, having having sort of moved around a bit and changed email addresses a few times I've lost a few times I've lost some of my um, connections to places you know the museums are providing um, PD for teachers so we've got all these fantastic opportunities and this came about just to try and bring all that information into one place. So, you know, if you miss it on your Twitter feed or you miss the email or you just don't know about it, this um, is an app I've put together to just try and bring all that together. So I just went ahead and did some screen mock-ups here and um, just to, uh, um, a tip here, if you want to go ahead and do some of these, I use a, a site called mock you phone now i don't know if that's how you pronounce it or if it's mock up phone with just one p um but it's dot com it's a free site and you can mock up um for any device that you like so i've just gone ahead and thrown some of these in because it's just for a mobile device so i can't walk you through it uh, any other way so that's it that's the landing screen um where you can search for events um and at the moment there's a news feed and i'm kind of looking at you know, whether to put um, some other information in there. But I'll just do a quick um, quick overview now of, of how to use it. So you can check out all the events that are listed under the list view, or you can do a keyword search. So let's say you knew there was a fantastic conference called Teach Tech Play, and you could go ahead and search for that. Now you'll see I had to um, backdate it there a little bit because, and you can go back and look at previous events that have already been. Um, you can search on a map. Now, apologies to anyone not in Australia or New Zealand, because um, it's just based there for now. So, I've, and you can zoom in, zoom in on the map and you can see there where I found this awesome conference in Melbourne. Um, you put, I've also put them into categories. So you, based on the type of event or the level that you're teaching. Um, so there's, there's a perfect example of what you could see. You can find out, um, you see on the right there, where it's happening. You can RSVP through the app. And then you can create a list of favourites. There's also the ability to add comments there. Uh, no one's using that yet, but, you know, we'll wait and see. Um, and if it's still a current event, you can add it to your calendar from there as well. 
So there's a list of favourites. Now that never expires. You can always see um, One what minute. you might like to go to. Yeah. <laughs> or um, what you've been to. And there's a social aspect to it as well. Where, and so you can log in via Facebook or Twitter. And so you, anything you post in there goes onto both walls at the same time. Bit of a hybrid of Twitter and Facebook. And I'm just working on the moment at uh, replacing that content, contacts button with um, notifications so you can tailor them. And that's it. So, oh, and that's just a shot from my website. The best way to download at the moment, especially for um, Android, is through that link. For some reason, it doesn't come up. Um, but yeah, so that's that's it. Um, and yeah, the, the site's edevents.com.au, nice easy one. Perfect. So, yeah, I just want to share that in, in the hope that it's useful to people because that's, that's what it's all about. Perfect. Thank you, Deb. And, and that's the timer right there. So perfect timing. Uh, can, you, can you, oh, hang on, I'll stop sharing oh, yeah, I there. Yes, I can. <laughs> I timed it too. Fantastic. I don't ever walk into a classroom without my timer app. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I'm so bad sometimes. I actually not so bad, but yeah, time is something that we always as teachers are keeping our eye on and it does run away from <laughs> us a lot of the time. But I really love that because there are so many events and the thing with events are a lot of the time I don't even see them and I go, oh, that looks like it was a pretty cool event that happened. And you don't even know about half the events that are out there. So it's great that you've created a spot where you can go and see where everything is. Did anyone else have any comments or questions for Deb? Yeah, I do, Deb. I'm really interested in the, the, your experience in the startup world. So You've got a lot of mock-up screens there. Do you have technical expertise in terms of coding or did you come up with the vision and then look to find somebody who could do the heavy lifting in that space for you? I've gone the, the budget approach and I've used um, a platform for creating an app. And there are a bunch of them out there now. They're fantastic. So, you know, you essentially pay a subscription. So you're constantly getting their updates. Um, I looked at doing it the other way, going down the investor track, because the two startups I worked with did that. It's huge money. Um, it's, you know, you've got to get your investors on board. It's a whole other approach. So I've gone with the bootstrapped method here of just doing it essentially on my own, at my own pace. And um, yeah, really just proof of concept, you know, see if it flies before making any massive investments. And so far, so good, getting really fantastic feedback. So when did you have the, that aha sort of moment? Like, was it a, you just noticed that you were just missing out on all of these things and that sort of prompted the, there's a problem here or what was your thinking in that space? It's kind of... Um, there's a whole bunch of things that have um, a, whole, a whole lot of factors that led me to this. So yeah, personal experience, um, you know, organizing things. Uh, one of the startups I've worked with was about um, providers and getting their information to teachers and their struggles with that. So probably over the last four years, this idea has been in my head, but I've been waiting for someone else to do it. <laughs> and, and the bottom line was no one has. And then, through that experience that I'd had with um, the two startups, I just went, you know what, I, I'm going to do this. I felt confident enough to know how to go about it because there's a whole lot of things involved with the marketing and the sales. And then I could certainly do with some help with my website. <laughs> hint, hint. <laughs> but yeah, it's, I've learned so much. Yeah. <laughs> the learning curve is insane, um, but really cool. And it's also, it translates also to what I'm doing with the kids. You know, I'm doing a whole lot of design thinking with them um, and, you know, problem solving. And so I pretty much thought, well, I'm, I'm just going to do practice what I preach and go ahead and, and have a go. Well done. So I am. Thank you. Oh, and have to, I do have to say that I have an incredible support network, all these amazing mentors helping me through this process. So it's, I'm definitely not doing it on my own. Um, yeah, so I, I, I recommend it to anybody who's brave enough. You know, or, you know, if you've got an idea, make it happen. And I think that's a very good point because, you know, 
I did not know a thing about coding when I first started doing this or anything about putting a website together. And yeah, you just sort of have a go and you do have people who help you. Steve is a massive help in teaching me a million things. Um, but yeah, it's, if you've got any good idea, people will support you. And I think, you know, your app and also Teach Tech Play's general of what we do, it wouldn't be what it is without everybody in the community sort of coming together and doing it. So huge thank you, Deb, for sharing that. I know that a lot of people will enjoy looking at that app and pinning some upcoming PD. Next up, we have got Matt. So Matt, you will be sharing right ideas, which I'm very interested to know more about. So let me know when you're ready and I will begin the timer. You see my screen, all right? Yeah. Can I? Beautiful. All right, better get started. Um, right Ideas um, has popped up recently, uh, this little app that's kind of gone under the radar the last couple of weeks. Um, so I thought I'd explore it just a little bit. Um, and it, its purpose really is, is to, to combat this, the, the blank page um, syndrome, the, the struggle that some of our students have um, in being overwhelmed um, without some element of scaffolding or, or um, support in in planning their ideas. It is an Office 365 app. Um, so the first thing you do is, is sign in with your Office 365 account um, and get nice kind of export options and import options um, built into that. Whenever I jump into a, a new app, um, usually the first thing I do is jump to settings and, and have a look at, at what's behind there, what's the guts um, and what can I tweak. Um, and for me, that was turning on um, part of speech, tagging, um, keywords and, and leaving playback and things like that on. So the premise is you hit that plus symbol, what would you like to start writing? Um, and there's a series of inbuilt uh, templates for students on various text types um, and a custom template, which I'll get to towards the end. Um, I've just mocked that one um, earlier today with once, um, given that there's a new book coming out uh, later this year. And you see these sections, so a series of sections, inside each section are questions. And you can see the nice visual cues down the side as to how students are progressing through those questions. Um, so in regards to a book review, first question, what is the title of the book? And the simplicity is what I like most about this app, um, that it could be used across a whole range of year levels um, with three input types down the bottom. Um, the ability to record, um, and that's a 15 second recording. Um, I'm not sure if that's a, an idea to keep it concise um, or a, a limitation of the um, software, but you could always use the inbuilt uh, dictation tool um, to combat that, um, to get a bit more out of it, input uh, via text, or that third one, uh, draw or, or doodle. Um, again, really simple, minimal distractions, um, and that sits nicely there with a, a piece of text or voice input as well. At the end of each section, um, there's also add a question. So students can add a question and, and expand on ideas that um, may not be within that template. Uh, Switching then over to outline, that's what it outlines um, their planning and, and what they've done. And this might be used just like that with the device alongside um, a piece of uh, pen and paper writing. Um, what you can also do, jump up the top, is export in three ways. Um, so email sets it out nicely just as text, but it also attaches a Word document and it attaches any image that they've drawn um, throughout. So that's pretty versatile and, and flexible. Export to OneNote, they select um, the OneNote, but it does have to sit um, in their OneDrive, which is a little bit tricky for class notebooks. Um, and export to Word just dumps it straight away to their OneDrive, um, which is pretty slick. Uh, custom template is them uh, creating their own template or you modeling that with them um, from scratch. And then uh, to support that is a teacher companion site, um, which allows you as a teacher to build various templates. Um, so an example I made last week for our digital leaders is an app review template. Um, and then once you've built that, drag and drop around, you can put example text in for each of the fields. That can be saved um, to your device uh, as a dot right ideas file. Um, that then you could uh, drop to Edmodo or whatever it might be to share with them or you can save that straight to your OneDrive. Uh, once you've saved it to your OneDrive, you can import straight away from the app home screen. So I guess to, to kind of sum up, um, I must be getting close to four minutes. Um, yeah, you are, sorry, I was too that, intrigued, right. you got 10 seconds. Uh, all right, give me 20 then. Um, all right. 
to, to kind of sum up, to take 365 away, to take the app away, to take the device away, I think it, it kind of raises three things to me is, especially when we're in the digital space, how are we supporting students and, and scaffolding um, their writing, be it pen and paper, be it Google Doc, whatever it might be, how can we support them? Normalizing accessibility features. Um, they're only categorized as accessibility features by settings really. Um, and I think any just quick use of an app like this makes it normal and, and makes students particularly that, um, that need to lever off um, tools like dictation or, or text to speech more often, makes them feel far more comfortable um, around their peers by utilizing that. And then thirdly, I guess it builds nicely off uh, Deb presenting. Um, this was an idea, part of the Microsoft Garage um, experiment projects, which is their interns and staff um, developing projects and, and expanding on ideas. And I know many of the Teach Tech Play educators are, are big advocates for Genius Hour and, and if it's a PYP setting, taking action and, and building ideas. So I love that this is just a really simple free app um, that was developed to, to kind of combat a, an idea about supporting that blank page um, for our students. So that's Right Ideas. Thank you, Matt. And sorry, I got distracted. I was um, too intrigued no, no, no. to know how it exactly worked because I hadn't yet seen that. And I'm just thinking straight away how I can use it in my own classroom. So thank you for sharing that. And I imagine it's available uh, iOS and um, Android as well. Purely iOS. Um, iOS moment, only. Oh, that's funny, okay. Uh, that's fine since we're iPads. So that will work perfectly. I'll make sure to add it to our app list to get the girls to have that ready because we're doing a stories unit right at this moment. So um, connecting to our how we express ourselves unit. So I can see a straight nice. connection. So thank you for that, Matt. Um, I need to play with it a bit more, I think. Did anyone else have any questions? I just had a quick question, Matt, and just fantastic. I have a great idea. I'm just wondering um, if you can share any sort of, sort of stories that have come out of that. Have, have there been any real successes or are you seeing like other teachers adopt this as well? Yeah, it's a great question. It actually came out, um, I think, three weeks ago or four weeks ago, and we've been on two weeks holidays. So I've had one one crack uh, with a mate supporting it in one class and also um, with one student, just one-on-one. -on -one. And um, that's in the upper primary years, um, years yeah. five and six. Um, and it, it gelled really nicely. I guess to um, a credit to, to that classroom in particular, they had already built a pretty nice culture in regards to the use of um, dictation tools and speech to text and things like that. And um, in many instances, I guess, um, to, to not um, go back, I guess what I've shared, there'd be instances where it might be too much um, scaffolding um, and too, too prescriptive um, in the writing process where some simple prompts in a, um, where 365s so that would be in their class notebook and, and pushing that out might be that or, or similar in a Google Doc or, or things like that. Um, but for those, um, particularly that book review one, that gelled straight away. Um, the, the preset questions in there were, were really nice and, and yeah, really expanded um, their ideas. And, and there's a few prompts um, you might notice where it said, um, describe the, how the characters evolved. Um, there were prompts there that said relationship, um, attitude, values, something like that. So, um, and also, I guess every question, every section wouldn't have to be utilised. It could just be a simple starting point um, for some students with some text types. Other times, others just want to dive in and, and may feel that this may kind of stifle their, their creativity in some aspects. So I think the more prescriptive text types, um, it, it would work really nicely as a, as a scaffolding. And, and there might be other times where it's, it's a more optional um, use by students in the class. Yeah, fantastic. Perfect. Thank you, Matt. Next up is myself. So I'm actually not going to need to share my screen to begin with, but um, I'll start and then I'll share my screen. So today I'm going to be talking about something that I created last year, which was a five piece of positive digital footprint. So I got this off the, it's adapted from the Queensland government and I created a nice visual for my students last year. I found it really helped just to get them aware of their digital citizenship and what they were doing online. But this year, in teaching year six, a lot of it was revision for them, just a reminder, a prompt to remember it, which the visual for me worked really well last year. But this year I've moved to year three where it's our introduction to our one-to-one -one iPad program where students bring their own device into school. So 
a lot of them are not aware of the online their online presence and their interactions online and so whenever we started to talk about it i kept finding that they didn't quite understand and they couldn't quite put it into context, especially with their age and their exposure to um, digital technologies and their, the app variety. A lot of them have used iPads in the past, but they've been very much controlled by the parent. The parents have known where well, this is the first time they've only got their own device and they sort of go around on their own. So in the classroom, I thought I need something to support them to interact with each other and discuss and understand exactly what they are doing online and what could happen. And in doing that, I kept finding sort of online games or online things, but they weren't quite what I wanted. I didn't want my students to just go away with their iPad or their, on the computer and just work one-to-one. -one. I wanted them actually to discuss with others and to really understand it. So that's when I created the five piece or a positive digital footprint board game. So it works very much um, around the same idea. I'm just gonna share my screen with everybody. So you can, I don't need that one. Um, now I can't find what I want. Oh, there it is. Um, so the board game is essentially the feet around the outside is what you move around. So the students can play in groups of two to six, ideally, and they start down the bottom and they work their way around. So they roll a dice and they move around the board game. Now, when they land on a colored foot, they pick up one of the cards from the gray box. Now, in picking it up, there are a range of questions. So an example is this one I've got in my hand. A friend got an unkind message from someone. What should he or she do? So A, reply with an unkind message, B, delete it, take a photo and tell an adult or D, delete it and tell an adult. And then it has, so their partner or someone else in the game will read them the question with the options. Then they sort of decide which one they think is the correct one. And the person who's reading it, obviously the correct answer is take a photo and tell an adult, which is C. And it also has stated on there, um, the if it's under protect or positive so it's linking back to one of the five P's now in doing this I sort of worked with my students I said who wins I said is it about winning in this game and they said no not really I said but once they've got the card correct the girls actually thought of this they could then keep that card so whoever had the most cards at the end I essentially was the winner. I personally didn't create it for a winning game, but being children, they always want a winner when they play a game. So they thought of that. Now, the questions are directed very much to my school um, because I know of things that have come up. So there obviously won't be suited to everyone, but you can download this for free off my blog. So you can get the board game and the question cards. So the question cards work that you print them off and then stick them double-sided um, and laminate them. So you can see the questions and the answer and then it's the obviously the cover for the other side that sits on the board game. There are a range of things. So this one's very particular oops, to our school. At night, where should um, devices, including my iPad, be kept on charger in my bedroom, on charger in the kitchen or under my pillow? So obviously it's just trying to build that positive um, digital citizenship, positive use of technology, both at home and at school, and also sending the message home. So this is available for parents to download at home as well, so they can play at home and educate themselves on positive digital citizenship and what they, they should be aware of with their, with their child. So that's just something I've created. It's not tech related. Well, it is tech related, but not in the sense of what you do. And yeah, if you want a copy or want to Give me some feedback on it to improve it more. Let me know. It will be on my blog. Alani, that's just amazing. Can I, one thing that I love about it is that you have made it context specific. So in terms of the, the questions, did you start with a pile of questions or did you start with your students? What was the way, the order that you so went? What we sort of did was being here for three years, a lot of questions continually came up like, where does the iPad get charged? And these questions came from parents as well as problems we know that students face. So there's some in there, you know, my friends all have this app, but um, my parents, uh, I have not allowed it or something. What should I do? Do I just get it anyway? Do I tell mum that it's for school or so because a lot of problems that we find at our school is one app in particularly musically which I'm sure many of you have experienced as well is not suited for the age group so 
questions around that, questions around sending messages during class time. We have a massive thing where parents sometimes message the kids directly rather than go through um, the correct avenues. So it's about educating. I asked teachers in my school, um, I didn't quite ask the community, but I think what we've created includes everything. So it was mainly teacher input to the questions that I created to answer that. Well done. No, it just, I couldn't find anything. Like everywhere I looked, I went on Teachers Pay Teachers, I went and nothing really fit and nothing was really in the context I needed. So it may work for some of you, but it may not for others, but it's there as a idea. Were there any other questions? Yeah, I'm going to jump in. That's amazing, Eleni. Absolutely love it. And thank you for sharing it. That's so generous. Um, have you thought about getting the girls to um, have some input? to create yeah. some yeah. of the questions. Because that Definitely. my first thought then was I can totally see some of the senior kids, because I'm working in primary, I can totally see some of the seniors creating it, even modifying it for the younger ones. Yeah, definitely. I think just because a lot of our students aren't aware yet of the problems that they will face. And so right. in us directing for year three, it just seemed right. But a lot of the questions that I do have wouldn't quite be suited for year some year six you would probably if i went back to year six i would adapt and change the questions but it's easy to be done and it links back to that visual of you know building a positive footprint so um yeah definitely something i could move towards but i think just for our context in the start of the year it worked in me creating it their questions would have been very surface level and not quite understood so but yeah, at the end of the year, Absolutely. we definitely could redo it and they could suggest things for the following year, definitely. So thanks. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And I've, done, I've been doing quite a bit of work with schools on, uh, on programs. And what I love about this is that it's something that, that, that could be revisited right through the year. You know, they could play that at any time. Yeah. I'm struggling with the idea of just addressing some of these things once, like at the beginning of the year, and then yeah. and not revisiting. So yeah. that's... Brilliant. What a fantastic resource. Yeah. And it's perfect, especially if you've got like 10 minutes here and you're like, oh, you know, timetables, things change all, change all the time. You can just pull it out and say, all right, remember we visited this a few weeks ago. You can play it again. And it's also set for home learning. So the kids can go home and play it with their parents as they please. We don't have stretch structured homework there's just activities that they can choose to do if they want to so that's one of the activities they can choose to play with their parents but yeah but to end our show we'll keep moving um it is available on my blog if you want a copy just um give credit where needed that's the only thing if you want to take it um next up we have blake sharing something another little project he's been working on so blake let me know when you're ready and i will start the timer yeah, I'm ready to go. I'm going to be quick here. So um, basically, we've been working on, a, um, on an app for syncing Google Classroom um, and setting up your classes. So it's a Google Sheets add-on um, and it works with, um, with either as a teacher. So as a teacher, I can set up my classes or it's really great as well if you want to differentiate your class and set up a lot of um, classrooms inside of your class. So some people might have, you know, uh, kids who are, are ahead or behind um, various, you know, um, differentiation set up for them. Um, so we're, you know, um, we've built this uh, with a company that I'm involved with called Navi. Um, and the reason I like to do that is rather than me just building it myself, you know, we've now got the power of the company behind it. So there's support there. And if you have issues, you, you've got somewhere to go, which is fantastic. So I'm just going to share my screen now and give you a quick demo of it. Um, so basically it's a Google Sheets add-on. You can go to classroomsync.navi.com to get started. Um, and I'm just going to run you through it really quickly. It's for Google Apps, obviously, or for G Suite, as it's called now. If we go into Google Sheets, um, this is where we kind of set it up. So you can just copy and paste, hopefully, from your um, student management system, which is a nice, easy way to get it going. Um, but we'll just show you right now how it works. So if we go up here, um, the, basically, if you're a classroom teacher, you really just need the class name and then the students as columns. Um, so you may, may or may not be able to see that. But um, with the class name, we can just set up your know, basic name. So if it's like you know, year nine maths class or something like that, and we have students, so we'll put in you know, the student email address. We can put the full like at McKinnon SC for me, uh, email address in there, or most student management systems just give the code out, the student code. So you can just use the student code. 
you separate that by a comma or a semicolon, and we can type in there, you know, Michael, I can type um, Chris, I can type Matthew, you know, I can type all, all the kids' codes or their names in there. Um, and that, they will be set up as students inside of your class. So we can do a few of these. Obviously, this is where it gets really great. And especially if you're an admin, um, we can set up the entire class from the timetable. And we can also come back and, and update it as well. So we'll just copy the same students here again. Um, we'll set up these two classes, 09 Maths and 09 English. So to set it up, we go into add-ons. Uh, we go get add-ons and we find Navi Classroom Sync. Uh, and we just press start on that once it's installed for Google Sheets. And then you'll see on the right here, we've got the ability to set up the fields. So all we want to do is find class code. We'll match that to class name. And we'll match class name to class name. You can use a code if you want to come back and add students into that class. Then we've got class teacher. We'll leave that unset and that will just assume that I'm the teacher because I'm the person doing it. You'd only use class teacher if you're an admin setting it up for your whole school. And then we have students, the students column. That's all we need to do. We just set up um, each field to align to each column and we press sync. When we press sync, then it starts our little log down here. We can see it actually crunching the, the information. It validates it. And then it starts to sync those courses. So we'll see one, one course, sync, two courses synced um, as they process. And this will actually email you as well a, a log of what's happened, uh, what people got added. If there are any issues of adding people, it'll email that whole log to you. So we see that's complete now. Now if I just go to Google Classroom, so classroom.google.com or however you'd like to get there, We'll see these classes appear in here, um, ready for us to start using. So we'll have 10 English and nine maths, and we can either accept or decline them. If we made a mistake, we can press decline and we can get rid of it. Uh, but if we want to start using it, we press accept. And then that class is now created. We've got a stream, we've got this class set up, ready to go. And the students are here and they're all marked as invited. So the students will see that same thing. Do they want to join the class or not when they next log into Google Classroom? So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, if you do want to get started with it again, you can just go to classroomsync.navi.com. We have uh, a video here of how to do it. There's also a template if you want to grab that um, in Google Sheets and you can just start with that template and fill it in. But again, it's just trying to make it really easy to copy and paste out of a, um, out of a student management system. If you use Compass or Accelerus or any of those, you can copy your students out. Um, or if you're an administrator, it's even better. I, that's why we built this actually is because I wanted to push this out to the whole school and set up everyone's classes in one go. So, you know, there wasn't a tool that could do it. Um, and why not build it, we thought. Wonderful. Thank you, Blake. It's amazing how, you know, there's been a few things on tonight's show where we haven't, where presenters haven't been able to find what they wanted. So we've just gone and created it. And I think that's the beauty of the world we're currently living in, that we can actually do that. If you have an idea, if you can't do it yourself, reach out to others and we can help you. So again, you know, thank you, Blake, for sharing that. I know that will be very helpful and it's so easy. So even if a classroom teacher, instead of entering all their names individually into the classroom, it's a massive time saver. Did anyone else have any comments? I do. I'm so glad I'm not presenting tonight. Whew, what a lineup. <laughs> um, Blake, Navi, what, what, the, what, can you explain a little bit of, uh, about what they do? Yeah, sure. So Navi is a company I co-founded about two and a half, three years ago um, with, um, with another person who worked in schools as well. And we, and we both kind of had our frustrations with certain things not being out there in the market. And, and whilst I'm still working, obviously, at McKinnon full time and, and doing that, uh, Michael, who's my, my co-founder, he's, he's working full time on the business with, um, with other people who help out and support and things like that. And, and we build another product called iNewsletter, which is a online newsletter platform for schools. And, uh, you know, we're in over 100 schools and uh, lots of, you know, interest on that just because of this whole digital communication thing and you know even go back to those five p's and and that stuff Eleni's working on is is uh, it's becoming a real focus for people and i think a lot of our tools are around communication and and around simplicity you know i'm trying to make it easier for people to do the stuff that shouldn't be super complicated um, teachers should be able to get on and do it themselves without needing the help of experts and things like that so that's really our passion you know we're about you know, making it easier and really driving that kind of self-service innovation into the classroom, into schools and, and, you know, in every part of the school, not just the classroom, but how we run schools and how we communicate with parents and looking at that whole picture. That's just brilliant. Brilliant. 
Well, as you said, Steve, it was a stellar lineup tonight. I have no idea who I'm going to vote for. Um, they were absolutely fantastic um, presentations by all our presenters. And, you know, today, this show today, we had no international um, presenters, but you can see just how much great stuff is happening in Australian schools at the moment. So make sure you do vote for your favourite presenter. Um, Voting is open till Friday, 8 p.m. I know that you know there's always a bit of competition around that. And also, if you have any other questions or want to catch up on anything, just go to our website and you can see so much more of everything that we do do on our website. So, um, a huge thank you to everyone for joining us tonight, and we look forward to seeing everyone next month. Our next episode airs on Monday, the 5th of June, and that is episode 31. So the episodes are increasing. Um, I remember all the way back to that first episode so long ago, and to think we're at 30 is done now. Um, we should have had little birthday hats for our 30th episode. I didn't even think, but um, huge thank you to everybody for joining us tonight and um, look forward to continuing to learn um, with uh, some more fantastic educators next month. So thank you, everyone. Uh, let me... Bye, guys. Oh, and congratulations to you. Oh, before I forgot, <laughs> thank you, Deb. No, not to me. Also, I forgot <laughs> to say. No, no, congrats. <laughs> no, congratulations to you. It has to be said, I'm sorry I meant to earlier, on your recent award. I don't remember the title of it, but it was so, it's so deserving. So congratulations. I think we've all heard, I hope we all heard about it. Yeah, the AC, ACCE, is it, Eleni? Educator yeah, of the that, Year. You tried yeah. to slip that one through without getting a congratulations. So I'm really yeah. glad you got called out. Yeah. <laughs> but now I actually have... <laughs> I have forgotten to congratulate you, Steve, as well. As a host of Teach Tech Play, congratulations on being accepted into the ADE, so Thank the so Apple much. Distinguished Education Educator Program. So well done to you as well. So yeah, a bit of celebrations um, the last month with Teach Tech Play Conference and um, both Steve and myself getting recognised for the great stuff that we do, which is always nice. So, um, but really it's an award for everyone who views Teach Tech Play and has supported me. It's not just me who does it all. It's everyone around me. You're too yes. humble. Just accept it. It's an awesome <laughs> award. Do great stuff. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thanks, guys, and we'll see you next month. Bye.